Exploratory data analysis. We're going to look at five, the five number summary and box plots. So our objectives here are to compute the five number summary, and I'll be honest, we've already done that, um, and draw and interpret box plots and how they relate to the normal distribution. So the five number summary is the minimum, Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum. So we've already done this, right? We just didn't call it the five number summary. So the five number summary um, reports all of these, the, the median, quartiles, and the extremes. And here's the five number summary for the body temperature data set that we've looked at ad nauseum. And we, we did this on the T83. Remember, you just um, put the data into L1, press stat, scroll over to calc, and select one variable statistic, and it'll give all you this to you. And I think it even gives it to you in the order that we normally report it. Okay, so here it is. And so when you're reporting this, we just write it in order. So we'll put 96.3, comma, 97.8, comma, 98.3, comma, 98.7, sure what happened there, comma, 100.8. That is your five number summary. Okay, to create the five number summary on the TI, press stat, enter. We're going to put our data into L1. In fact, we've already been doing the five number summary, we just didn't recall it that. Now we're going to press stat, scroll over to calc, and select the familiar one variable statistic, one, var one var stats. Press enter. You can press L1 if you want, so second L1, and press enter. And then just scroll on down and you will see the five number summary. Min, Q1, Median, Q3, and Max. So if you're going to use StatCrunch to crunch this out, um, go to Stat, and then select Summary Stat, and then Column, or Columns. And then select the column that you want to get the data. So ours is the temperature for the body temperature. And then um, make sure that all these values are in there. So the min, max, Q3, and the median. Just make sure you selected all those. They are usually selected by default. And then when you press OK, it'll crunch it out. And so again, here is your five number summary. They don't put these in order. You got a couple of in order here. But the median, make sure you, you slap that in right there. Actually, they're not in order at all, are they? So it's 96.3. comma Q1 97.8 comma the median which is 98.3 and then Q3 which is 98.7 comma the max 100.8 the numbers are just written in order right there's your minimum value there maximum at the end and then your medians in the middle and there's your Q1 and here 98.7 is your Q3 so how do we visualize this? Um, we visualize it with a box plot, um, where the minimum is this value here. The maximum, technically the outlier is the maximum, but we, we'll call that the maximum. Q3 is this guy, these lines right here, and then the median is in the middle. And you'll get a better flavor of how to interpret these once you see a handful of them. So to create the box plot in StatCrunch, go to Graphics, select Box Plot, and then go through the menu as usual. Just make sure you um, put um, you select the, to use fences to identify outliers, and then draw the boxes horizontally is an option you can select. It doesn't really matter. And here is a box plot of the body temperatures. Notice that it didn't that it computes outliers a little bit differently than the way I I showed you. All programs do them differently. I mentioned that to you then. So this one had two outliers. I believe we had one, and even that one was questionable, according to our 1.5 um, times the IQR, and then Q1 minus that. And we have an outlier here. And in StatCrunch, you can actually highlight that, just select and kind of highlight that point, and you'll see where that point is, that observation is actually highlighted in the data set. So again, here is our 
That line there is the median. We can see it's about 98.2. And here is Q3. And so that should line up really well with what we've done before. Here's what it looks like on the T8384. So when we put that in, we selected the box plot. Um, and we selected the one with outliers, and very similar how it shows up on the um, on StatCrunch. And again, you can press trace and actually trace on these values. The outliers, this value here, um, Q1, the median, Q3, etc. And don't worry about learning how to do this in Excel. It's not it's not trivial to do it in Excel. So we'll just use StatCrunch, um, the TI, and possibly Minitab. Okay, to create the um, the box plot, we're going to do stat, edit. We put our data into L1 again. Go to second y equals and make sure your stat plot is turned on. Mine is on, but I noticed the plot is not selected right, so it's on histogram. I need to scroll down and let's select um, one of those two um, box plots. Let's do the first one. The first one's going to show me some outliers. And press enter. Make sure your X list is L1, frequency is 1. We'll do zoom stat. And there is our box plot. Now what you can do is you can press the trace button and you can trace and you should see in the bottom left the quartiles, the medians, the mins, and the maxes. Which is pretty nice. Okay, so you can trace around there to make sure you um, you have it in there right. So what a lot of students will do is they'll do the five number summary first, then do the box plot and check it. Okay, so when constructing the box plot, if you're going to do one by hand, um, which I'm not going to require you to, but just basically going through it, you get the five number summary and then construct the scale that includes the minimum, maximum, and then construct the box with the rectangle, extending from Q1 to Q3, and then draw a line where the median is, and then extend that box on. So construct a box plot for the following average number of vacation days in selected countries. So took a random sample of nine countries, and this is the number of vacation days that were allowed. And I'll actually walk you through the steps using the TI. You know, small data sets, I usually turn to the TI. If I have larger data sets, I usually turn to a program like Minitab or StatCrunch. You know, just nine data points were okay. Um, press Stat. I'm going to edit a list. Select Edit uh, number one and put the data into L1. Next, press second Y equals to access the stat plot and make sure it's on. So you're going to turn it on and then make sure you select the right type, right? We're going to select the box plot. So you can either select this one or it may be better rather than this one to select this guy here. This one will actually show us the outliers. So select this guy right here with the outliers. You see those visually right, right there, those two little dots. And then press zoom 9, and it'll try to fit the data, and it, it does a, usually a pretty good job with the box plot. And there we go. So there is our data. You can press trace, and you should be able to get a visual of the quartiles. I just press trace there, and you can see Q3. It even tells you Q3 is 36. Example 2. So you should be able to, to identify, to be able to determine a box plot given a data set. And also, if you're given the box plot, you ought to be able to kind of pull off the important values. So if this is our box plot. Hopefully this is easy by now. There's our minimum value. So the minimum value is 200. Here is our Q1. It's 225. Our median is right here at 275. Our Q3 is 300, Whoop. and our maximum here is 325. Or you could have just written those numbers in order, right? 200, comma, 225, comma, 275, comma, 300, comma, and 325. Generally, I don't care if you list them out this way. Let's assume those are in the order. 
or if you list them, if you actually just label them, it's fine too. Okay, how do, how do these box plots actually compare to the normal distribution? So let's look at these sort of side by side. So what would a box plot of a uniform distribution look like? Everything would be equal, right? The values from here to here are the same, that's the same, that's the same, and this line's the same. So bell shape is going to look like this. Got long, thin guys here. We got um, skewed right. Remember, skinny skewed, skinny is the skewed part on the right. It'll look like this. So we got this long line here going out. And skewed left, very similar, long left. And so you'll get used to being able to see a box plot and say that's relatively normal, um, normal distribution. Okay, information obtained from box plot. So if a median is near the center of the box, um, it's approximately symmetric. So we can go back here um, and look at this um, guy here, approximately symmetric. Got the median right here in the middle of the box. See the median over here is a little bit to the right of the um, of the box. So it's not directly in the center. I mean, I, I agree it's kind of like reading tea leaves occasionally. It's a little bit hard to, hard to determine. If the median falls to the left of the center, it's positively skewed. Meaning to the right of the center, it's negatively skewed. If the lines are about the same length, it's about symmetric. And if the right line is larger than the left line, it's positively skewed. And left line larger than the right line, it's negatively skewed. I think it's easier personally to be able just to get a sense and look at this rather than looking at these instructions here. That's up to you. I put them there for folks who like to have those things written down. Here's another example. The box plots shown reveal the distributions of weekly attendance at Broadway shows in the first week of September 1999, where the shows have been categorized as play or musical. So look at these box plots to answer the following questions. Did one type of show, um, play or musical, tend to have more attendees and justify your answer? So you want to be able to read these box plots and answer questions like this. So pause the video here and see if you can at least mentally go through um, A through D. Okay, welcome back. I know you paused it. Um, so hopefully it's clear, this is, should be an easy one, that the musicals tend to have more attendees. Uh, we see this in that the box plot is located further to the right without a lot of overlap um, with the box plot for the plays. So we see here we have most of our data way over here. Okay, did one type of show tend to have more variability in its attendance figures? Justify your answer. Now hopefully this one is a little bit obvious too. Um, the musicals also had more variability in attendance. Um, we see this in that the box is much longer, right? So the box itself is longer. So our interquartile range is more dispersed. Um, and the whiskers extend further in both directions, right? So what would it look like if the plays, um, if one had greater attendance but less variability, we would have had a little box over here, right? Okay, so that would be less variability than the musical plays, but the attendance would be greater. It didn't do that, but just to let you know. Okay, part C, which distribution appears to be more skewed. Explain. So the attendance numbers for the plays appear to be a bit more skewed, right? Um, in fact, they're right skewed. Um, the distance between Q3 and the median is larger. So here's Q3 and the median. There's the median and there's Q1, right? So the median is not in the middle. The median is a little bit to the left. Um, and the whisker is much the right whisker is much longer than the left whisker. Uh, the musicals, the whiskers in the boxes, box half seem to have more similar length to each other. Um, this indicates more symmetry in the attendance values, though we have to be careful in saying too much about the shape based on the box plots alone. It's really hard to determine the shape on these. 
And then part D, for the musicals, the mean was equal to 7,121 and a standard deviation of 3,126. Between what two values do you expect to find the middle 68% of attendance figures? So I'll give you a moment to actually pencil this out. Okay, and because the data from the box plot appear to be fairly symmetric, um, we can just simply, remember within one standard deviation, so if we're going back to the symmetry here, here's our mean at um, 71.21, so 71.21, and so we expect the middle 68% to be one standard deviation away, right? So if we add this 31.26 to the mean, what do we get? We get 10,247, and then we subtract the 31.26 from the mean, and we get 39.95. I did that right. So between these two values we expect to find 68% of our attendance figures.